to make an announcement. Hello, can you all hear me? For those of you joining the Central Health Board of Managers meeting remotely, we are going to have to log off the meeting and we will rejoin in five to 10 meeting, five to 10 minutes. So please bear with us uh, for some technological issues and um, um, electrical issues as well. So we will be back in five to 10 minutes. Those of us at um, the Austin Independent School District headquarters. December 20th, 2021, 
and it is 505. As a quorum of the board is in attendance, I would like to call to order the meeting of the Central Health Board of Managers. Managers, this meeting is partially in person and via video conference as allowed under the Open Meetings Act. So we will expect to have six board managers physically present at AISD headquarters and two managers joining us via video conference. Our staff will be monitoring the feed for the meeting to make sure it remains visible and audible to the public online and here at AISD headquarters. In the event the online portion of the meeting suffers any loss of video or audio, we will take a short recess to attempt to address those issues. We will entertain a motion to limit debate for the meeting and staff will be asked to keep presentations within preset time limits. Also members, please ask for permission from the chair before speaking to ensure that microphones can be activated. For our virtual public participants, you will be muted and your video kept off until it is time for you to provide public comment. This will ensure the board manager's video feed remains visible at all times as required by state law. When it is time to provide public comment, your microphone will be unmuted and you will be invited to turn on video if you wish. The first item of business will be public communication. Members of the public who wish to make comments during the public communication portion of the meeting must have registered with Central Health via the online form or by telephone no later than 3.30 p.m. today. Yesenia, did anyone register to make comments for the board meeting? We have nobody signed up to make public comments. Thank you, Yesenia. Given that we have no one signed up to make comments, we will now proceed to the consent agenda. Consent agenda, C1. Approve the minutes of the Central Health Board of Managers November 17th, 2021 meeting. C2, receive and ratify Central Health investments for November 2021. C3, approve the fiscal year FY 2022 broker slash dealer applicants for conducting investment business with the Travis County Healthcare District, DBA Central Health, as recommended by the Travis County Cash slash Investment Management Department. C4, approve an update to the Central Health Value Statement as recommended by the Executive Committee in September 2020. Members, do I have a motion? A motion by Manager Bell, a second by Manager Brinson. Any discussion? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if we're going to speak to it, we have to remove it from the, so let's go ahead and remove C4. We can make it the first item on the regular agenda. Isn't that correct, David? Okay. So. Um, is there a motion? I move that the board. I move that the board approve consent agenda items C one through C three. And I second. Okay, we have a motion by Manager Bell, a second by Manager Brinson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Any abstaining? Thank you, members. We will now proceed to the regular agenda. Managers, per our recent practice, I ask that you hold your questions tonight until after staff have completed their presentations on each item. And at this time, I will entertain a motion to limit debate for all items in the regular agenda for our meeting this evening. Is there a motion? Manager Brinson? I motion. Uh, you wanna move, you wanna read it? Uh, yes, I motion to, uh, to con I'm sorry, I'm, I move the board limit debate on the agenda items. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the last one, sorry, sorry. I um, approve, I, I move that the board approve C1 through C3. No, 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 we're on the uh, limit. Oh yes, the limits, I'm sorry. I move that the um, that the board approve the three minute limitation. Okay, there's discussion. a motion, is there a second? Manager Mwani, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, any abstaining? Thank you, managers. So we will now move to item C4, which is now the first item on our regular agenda. Uh, approve an update to the Central Health Value Statement as recommended by the Executive Committee in September 2020. Who will be speaking to that? Mr. Giesel, please. Yes, thank you, members. Uh, members, there's some backup material in your packet, but to, to summarize it, um, 
the value statements are established by the board. And we have one that reads respect. We honor our relationship with those we serve and those with whom we work. And these value statements are at the top of our agenda items and formal documentations that go out. But um, this was pursuant to some work around equity and inclusion that we were doing internally. You all had an extensive training session, as you'll recall, and just uh, through the process of bringing this back through various agenda iterations, um, that's why this is before you today. We need board action in order to be able to change the value statement. And it would change from the one that we have now that I just read, respect to right by all. By being open, anti-racist, equity-minded and respectful in discourse, we honor those around us and do right by all people. And so it takes the virtue of respect, which is noble and honorable, and it expounds on that. And in fact, we pull that phrase forward into the new phrase, we pull honor uh, those around us into this new phraseology. So we keep obviously some moorings from the older uh, value statement and we bring it forward into the new statement right by all. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions? Yes, Manager Jones. Yes, I can, go ahead. So in terms of our value statement that you alluded to that we that are listed on our agenda for their talk, are we changing that wording exactly to what you just read? Yes, and it's as stated in the packet, right by all. Um, I know that deviates from the one word format, but it does, um, it's, it's a fairly succinct uh, phrase. Sure. So the word respect will be replaced by right by all. Okay, all right, and thanks very much. Appreciate Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions? Managers, do we have a motion? Manager Bell. I move that we approve uh, consent agenda item C4. Microphone, please. Mike. <laughs> I move that we uh, approve consent agenda item C4. Okay. All in favor? We need a second. second. Aye. Oh, we need a second. Yes. Was there a second? I second. Okay. Manager Brinson seconds. Thank you. So we have a motion by Manager Bell, second by Manager Brinson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any abstaining? Thank you, members. Motion is approved. We will now move to item number one. Approve the candidate recommendations made by the Ad Hoc Board Officer Nominations Committee for the following officer positions and elect the recommended candidates for calendar years 2022-2023. Um, and as you will call, this was uh, recommended uh, by the um, Executive uh, Committee and uh, uh, put on the agenda then for today. So A, Chairperson Dr. Charles Bell, Vice Chairperson Dr. Cynthia Brinson, Treasurer Dr. Julie Zuniga. And um, I wholeheartedly uh, endorse uh, certainly um, this, these um, stellar individuals for these positions. Um, Dr. Bell has been a stalwart, a, a leader, um, caring, compassionate, um, of great intellect and honor. And uh, he has served as well as chair of strategic planning and as uh, vice chair. And um, I would certainly be honored for him to be uh, chairperson of uh, the Central Health Board of Managers. Um, Dr. Cynthia Brinson um, has come on the board and uh, really um, shown that um, she is so um, invested um, in the work that we're doing and also by her career and all that she is doing. She brings a great compassion and expertise and would be honored to have her as vice chairperson of the Central Health Board of Managers. Um, Dr. Julie Zuniga stepped into uh, the position of treasurer uh, with with Grace uh, last year, and um, she has done uh, an excellent uh, job and has had positions previously in other organizations um, that are uh, similar. And um, we appreciate her uh, willingness to continue in this position of treasure. Um, so members, um, any questions or comments? Do we have a motion? Yes, Manager Motwani. 
I uh, move to adopt the slate of officers as proposed. Oh, I move that the board elect the nominated candidates to serve board officer positions during calendar years 2022-2023, as recommended by the ad hoc board officer nominations committee. Is there a second? Second. Second, second from Dr. Zamora. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any abstaining? Thank you. The motion passes. Uh, agenda item number two, approve the recommendation made by the ad hoc board officer nominations committee regarding the board secretary position and appoint Ms. Cynthia Valadez as board secretary for calendar years 2022-23. And uh, uh, manager uh, Valadez um, has done a wonderful job in this position of uh, secretary. She has the, the eye for detail that is necessary and uh, she has agreed to continue um, in this position if she were nominated, which of course she has been. Do we have a motion? Uh, I move that the board appoint Cynthia Valadez to serve as the board secretary during calendar years 2022-2023 as recommended by the ad hoc board officer nominations committee. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Manager Brinson, a second by Manager Bell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any abstaining? Thank you, managers. Well, I am delighted that uh, we now have our new officers uh, for the Central Health Board of Managers. Thank you very much. And I look forward to the leadership of all of um, our new officers very much. Agenda item number three. Receive and discuss a report on fiscal year to date healthcare service expenditures made by and accept the preliminary October and November 2021 financial statements for Central Health and the Community Care Collaborative. Lisa Owens will be presenting. Good evening, uh, Lisa Owens, Deputy CFO. Uh, happy to be with you tonight. Just making sure you can see my screen. Lisa, we lost your sound. Oh, no. You seem to be back. Okay. Lisa, continue. Okay. Am I there? Can you hear me? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm also sharing my screen. So hopefully you can see that. Let me go. Into yes, we screen. can. Okay. So uh, we are very early in the fiscal year, as you know, uh, and uh, in this uh, time period, we did share a balance sheet with you and we'll get that up on the website for October. Uh, but uh, rely heavily on estimates this early in the fiscal year as we're very early in our contract years and working with our partners. Uh, so I'm gonna focus on the November financial statements, uh, but happy to take any questions or follow up individually if needed. So I'll start with Central Health. Um, we are presenting preliminary financial statements through November. A uh, few highlights are in the uh, packet. But one I would highlight when we get to the uh, sources of funds, we have collected $14 million of the levy this year. Uh, last year, just 2 million at this time. Uh, so we're excited to have that uh, revenue start coming in. As you know, taxes are due uh, January 31st. So uh, December and January will be heavy months for collection. Taking a look at our balance sheet, uh, we are looking at um, uh, 255 0.5 million dollars in taxes receivable. Uh, you'll because those taxes are due, we do record the full tax levy at the beginning of the fiscal year. As those taxes come in, that receivable will go down, and our our sources of funds will go up. Uh, so you'll see an increase over last year as a result of increased uh, assessed values, as well as a slight increase in our uh, M and O tax rate. We also have a CO reimbursement receivable. That is an internal transfer uh, that we are making this month between the um, bonds that we received. You'll recall we received those late September uh, and we will be reimbursing ourselves into the operating account, uh, into the unrestricted account to pay for expenditures already spent on those approved uh, projects. Uh, in the total current assets, we do have $543.5 million. Uh, looking at our restricted cash and investments, um, you see an increase, a significant increase in restricted for capital acquisition. That's a combination of two things uh, year over year. We do have um, the bond uh, proceeds, the bond projects that were approved. 
of uh, over $77 million. Those are restricted for those capital projects, as well as our internal restriction on just our operating cash for uh, capital reserves uh, that we work with you guys. And we will be bringing back those quarterly capital reports as requested with timelines and project level budgets, uh, budget to actual. So expect to have a lot more detail on where we are with those projects uh, next month at the end of our first quarter. Uh, but that increase is a result of restriction for uh, cash reserves, as well as those uh, $77 million in bond proceeds. So our capital assets did go up a little bit um, since September 30th um, as a result, um, well, I guess that was right before September 30th, as a result of purchasing the Hancock building, we also recorded a land acquisition with that transaction. So our total capital assets are at 85 million and our total assets are at $853 million. If we look at our liabilities, again, we are anticipating receiving a significant portion of that deferred tax revenue, which is the tax dollars that we anticipate coming in in December and January. You'll also see in this area an increase in our debt service payable. As a result of issuing that debt, um, we did increase our debt service rate uh, in order to accommodate the additional principal and interest payments that we will have for all of our uh, debt financing. Looking at our restricted uh, non-current liabilities, we have that uh, counter offset of the uh, certificates, certificates of obligation reimbursement payable, again, that transfer uh, internally uh, for uh, allowable reimbursable expenses. And then again, you'll see an increase in our debt service long-term. Those are the payments that will be due on our debt service. Uh, both the 2020 refunding as well as the 2021 issue, uh, and that total is $80.2 million. If you look at our net assets as a result of that external restriction on our bond proceeds, we have restricted um, the amount uh, that, out of, that is still uh, not spent, about $56 million, uh, and that will go down as we spend those bond proceeds on our Del Valley and Hornsby Bend projects, and then eventually uh, the larger issue um, when the time is right on the uh, clinical, specialty clinical uh, investments and administrative headquarters at the Hancock Center. So again, our total liabilities and net assets at $853 million. Looking at our sources and uses, we do have about $14 million year to date in property tax revenue. We uh, will look forward to seeing some pretty big jumps in that in um, the next two months. Uh, lease revenue and then other revenue, um, we anticipate um, seeing higher um, earnings as we have a higher investment balance, uh, but total sources of funds year to date at $15.8 million. In our healthcare delivery, which I'll go to the next slide in just a minute, we have spent approximately $16.3 million. Our administrative program, $1.4 million, excuse me, uh, just about 11% of the budget at this point in the year and uh, tax collection expenses at 193,000. So our total uses as of uh, November 30th is estimated at $17.9 million. And at this time of the year, we do generally see that uh, we have excess uh, uses over sources, so a negative $2 million. In our healthcare services, uh, like I said, we have estimated that we've spent approximately $16.3 million there. Uh, primarily in primary care and specialty care. Uh, also our pharmacy line item at $1.4 million year to date. So a total in the healthcare services are estimated at $10.3 million. Uh, in our ACA program, uh, and then uh, that's our CHAP and uh, high risk program, $1.9 million. And our healthcare facilities and campus redevelopment, uh, just $168,000. Uh, we will see that start to go up as we have um, other operating expenses on the campus and continue the demolition. Those costs will be in that area of healthcare facilities and campus redevelopment as they cannot be capitalized. In our healthcare deliberating op operating costs, those are the departments that support uh, all the healthcare services contracts. Uh, we have about 10% year to date at $3.5 million. And then again, as a result of additional debt and additional interest, um, you are going to see a slightly higher interest uh, expense this year uh, at, um, on that line item, as we, which was budgeted, in order to um, 
plan for that additional interest uh, for the additional debt that we've taken out. So our total healthcare delivery expenses at $16.3 million. Uh, with that, it is very early in the year. You have additional details on behavioral health, pharmacy, and then of course, um, we also have uh, high level estimates for expenditures on our primary care services and specialty care services. But I'm happy to answer any questions on central health if you want, or I can continue with uh, CCC. Members, questions? any questions at this time? Manager Jones. Yes, I, I don't know if you can answer this question or someone else. It goes to, can you sort of give us, I've heard you mention several times, the redevelopment of the campus. Mr. Giesen, can you give me an update on where we are with regards to that? Or can you speak to that? Because uh, yes. I want to find out exactly where we are. Yes, sir. there's an agenda item uh, for tonight's meeting that will cover the Brackenridge campus redevelopment in, in depth and in detail. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So, all right. Yes, yes it's later in the agenda. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Lisa, do you want to proceed then? Okay, um, sure. Real quickly on the Community Care Collaborative. I'm hoping you can see my screen there. Yes. Um, on the CCC, uh, we do have... Um, Hold on, the, the screen I don't believe is visible. Oh, sorry. There it is. I had to hit the button. <laughs> yep, there you go. Thank you. Okay, uh, so in the CCC, uh, I'm gonna focus on the balance sheet. Uh, you will see a very consistent year, year over year, as of November. Uh, we do have about $23.8 million in uh, total assets, uh, primarily made up of cash, uh, and very similar to last year at $24 million. And in our liabilities, we have about $12.6 million, primarily made up of um, uh, liabilities to providers, healthcare services providers, as well as uh, deferred revenue, which is revenue that we've been we've earned that is under will be or could be under review uh, by the DISRIP uh, HHSC audit. Uh, we an don't anticipate any issues, but we defer that in uh, in order to just make sure that we have the appropriate reserves if necessary. Uh, we do have net assets of 11.3 million, uh, so our total liabilities and net assets is also 23.8 million. Um, in our sources of uses, um, again, early in the year and our primary source of funds are the $61.2 million in DISRIP revenue, which I just want to point out is the budget um, from FY 2020 uh, as a new budget was not adopted. Uh, we do anticipate less DISRIP revenue this year as we're toward the end of that uh, program and we can we will bring you an update on that as it gets closer that is generally received in uh, the summertime uh, but our um, early year sources are primarily going to be our contingency reserve carry forward as well as a little bit of interest uh, income of two two thousand dollars our healthcare uh, delivery program in the CCC is primarily uh, our specialty care and behavioral health contracts um, and then also our DISRIP project costs at $1.1 million. So we do have approximate uses of $2.8 million um, and net assets at $11.3 million. And just to highlight uh, the contracts that we have in the CCC, again, primarily in that specialty care area, our behavioral health contracts, as well as post-acute care um, and um, a few operating expenses at $1.7 million. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions about the CCC. Members, any questions? I'm looking at our screen too. I'm not. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Well, thank you. Did I hear a question? No. Okay. Um, thank you, Lisa. We really appreciate that uh, presentation. There's no motion necessary here, so members, not hearing any questions, we will move to the. Next agenda item, agenda item number four, 
discuss and take appropriate action on a resolution honoring Sherry Greenberg for her service as chair on the Central Health Board. Madam Chair, it is truly my privilege uh, to be able to not only read, but present this resolution to you. Uh, but before I read the resolution, I'd like to take a point of personal privilege to thank you personally for all of your service that you have provided us. Um, you have done an excellent job in leading this group uh, through some very contentious issues um, and bringing a group of individuals together with uh, very different opinions, allowing them to express their opinions and then bringing them to a final decision of which I know that everyone may not have been satisfied with, but we all as colleagues got behind them and uh, moved forward as a board. And that truly outlines uh, your leadership. Uh, time commitment, um, I don't think that many people in the public uh, nor some of the people on the board realize that uh, these meetings don't happen uh, very easily. There's a lot of uh, sort of work in the back office to make these meetings go smoothly, to bring the chair up to date and the chair efficiently uh, carries out her duty in moving the meetings forward. And so uh, I know that you have sacrificed a lot of personal time uh, to be able to do all of the things that are, are uh, required as chair. And I'd like to thank you for that also, because it's not easy. Um, as I tell staff and other friends, you have a life. And so you have to uh, be able to manage that life, but you were gracious enough to give us the time um, and your experience uh, to be able to lead this board. Um, your experience speaks for itself. Um, you bring so much to the table. Um, I don't think I realized that you worked at the city as in the city financial officer until I read this resolution. But now I know where all those pearls of wisdom with regard to finance come from. Uh, because I wondered in the back of my mind, it's like, you know, she's a professor. She's not really, I don't see her much in finance, but now I realize you definitely have that background. And we thank you for that. We needed that during this period of time. Um, as we move forward. I've learned a ton from you and I really appreciate everything. And uh, hopefully I can continue to represent this body as well as you and Dr. Zamora during my period of time here. And hopefully I can provide the necessary support to my fellow board members and to the excellent central health staff into the future. So with that, I would like to read a resolution expressing appreciation to Sherry R. Greenberg, MS, for her service as the chair of the board of managers of Central Health. Whereas Ms. Greenberg has served as a Central Health board member since February, 2015, and as board chair since January of 2020, and whereas Ms. Greenberg served as the manager of capital finance for the city of Austin from 1985 to 1989, overseeing the city's debt management, capital budgeting, and capital improvement program as a, finance, as a public finance professional. And whereas Ms. Greenberg is a clinical professor and fellow of the Max Sherman Chair in State and Local Government at the LBJ School of Affairs, and whereas Ms. Greenberg served for 10 years as a member of the Texas House of Representatives, including service as chair of key legislative committees, completing her term in January 2001, and whereas Ms. Greenberg bringing her talents, skills, scholarship, and leadership from a prestigious career in public service and higher education. And whereas Ms. Greenberg having boundless energy and dedication to the mission of central health, social justice and health equity. And whereas Ms. Greenberg leading 
a growing and innovating healthcare district in Travis County through a pandemic expansion of services and commencement of a new clinic site planning in Eastern Travis County. And whereas Ms. Greenberg has brought steadfast commitment to her role as the chairperson of Central Health Board of Managers and its continuous improvement, therefore be it resolved by Central Health that the board expresses its sincere appreciation and gratitude to Ms. Greenberg for her dedicated service to Central Health as chairperson of the Board of Managers and be it further resolved that the secretary of the board prepare a copy of this resolution for presentation to Mrs. Greenberg. Here, here. Um. Thank you very much, um, but the honor and privilege has been mine. And um, I want to say that the real work that has gone on has been work of my colleagues, work of all the staff and of the community. And um, I am deeply grateful to all of those who have pitched in in these extremely um, challenging times that we have had and the time that they have spent, my colleagues here and virtual, all the board members, all of the staff and members of the community who we are privileged to serve. Um, the, the work continues and um, I will tell you that um, from the bottom of my heart, this has been more meaningful than I can say. And I am confident that uh, Manager Bell will be an excellent leader as we move into the uh, next year, a new year, and let us hope that it is a uh, healthier year and a happy year for all. Thank you all so much for this honor and privilege, but this is about our community. It's not about me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe there's a motion on that, Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, is there a motion? Yes. Recognize me for a motion. Manager Bell. I move that the board approve the resolution just read honoring Sherry Greenberg for her service as chair on the Central Health Board. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second. Whoops. I think manager. So we have a, a motion by Manager Bell, a second by Manager Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Can I abstain on this one? <laughs> I'll be abstaining. Okay, so any opposed? Abstaining? Show uh, Andrew Greenberg as abstaining. Thank you. Okay, we will uh, now move to uh, the rest of our agenda. Um, Item, agenda item number five, discuss and take appropriate action on central health owned or occupied real property and potential property for acquisition, lease, or development in Travis County, including next steps in the redevelopment of the Central Health Downtown Campus, administrative offices of Central Health Enterprise Partners, and new developments in Eastern Travis County. Item number six, discuss and take appropriate action to authorize the Central Health President and CEO to execute amendments to the contract with J.R. Ramon and other professional service contracts to increase overall contract spending authority related to the Brackenridge project. Agenda item number seven, receive and discuss updates on the 1115 Medicaid waiver, delivery system reform and incentive payment, uh, open paren, DISRIP closed paren, program and other associated projects, the community care collaborative and other healthcare delivery partners, programs, projects and arrangements including agreements with Ascension, Texas. Agenda item number eight, 
receive and take appropriate action on the president and CEO's performance evaluation tool for May 2021 to April 2022 or other time frame as might be appropriate. I announce that the board is convening closed session to discuss agenda item five and closed session under Texas government code section 551.071 consultation with attorney and section 551.072 deliberation regarding real property Agenda item six in closed session under Texas government code section 551.071 consultation with attorney. Agenda item seven in closed session under Texas government code section 551.071 consultation with attorney. And agenda item eight in closed session under Texas government code section 551.071 consultation with attorney and section 551.074 personnel matters. I think we're going to need a few minutes for transition. They're going to change the settings. Yes, thank you. Just let me know when we're ready to go on the uh, session, closed session.
Uh, managers, we are back in open session. Um, agenda item number five, discuss and take appropriate action on central health owned or occupied real property and potential property for acquisition, lease, or development in Travis County, including next steps in the redevelopment of the central health downtown campus administrative offices of central health enterprise partners and new developments in eastern Travis County. There's no motion necessary on this item. Agenda item number five. Uh, we'll move to agenda item number six. Discuss and take appropriate action to authorize the Central Health President and CEO to execute amendments to the contract with J.R. Ramon and other professional services contracts to increase overall contract spending authority related to the Brackenridge project. Do we have a motion? Manager, uh, Manager Bell? I move that the board authorize Central Health President and CEO to execute amendments to the contracts for the Brackenridge demolition project with J.R. Raymond and the Central Health Civil Engineering and Project Management pool contractors in an amount not to exceed $2.5 million. The motions are second. Manager Brinson? Uh, I, I agree. Second. I second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Seeing none. Any abstentions? Thank you, managers. The motion passes. Item number seven, agenda item number seven, receive and discuss updates on the 1115 Medicaid waiver delivery system reform incentive payment, DISRIP program and associated projects, the community care collaborative and other healthcare delivery partners programs, projects and arrangements, including agreements with Ascension, Texas. Managers, there is no motion necessary on this item. We will now move to agenda item number eight. Receive and take appropriate action on the president and CEO's performance evaluation tool for May 2021 to April 2022 or other time frame as might be appropriate. Managers, do we have a motion? Manager Brinson, do you want to read the motion? I, I move that the board approve the president and CEO's performance evaluation tool for the period of May 2021 through April 2022. We have a motion and a second. I second that. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any abstaining? Thank you, members. The motion has passed. Uh, agenda item number nine confirm the next regular board meeting date, time, and location. Managers, our next Central Health Board of Managers meeting is scheduled for Monday. January 26, 2022 at 5 p.m. at AISD headquarters, 4000 South I-35 Frontage Road, Austin, Texas. At this time, I'm ready to accept a motion for adjournment. Manager Bell? I move adjournment. Do we have a second? Manager Motwani, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, abstaining. Managers, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Thank members. you to staff and thank, thank you, you to Madam the Chair. community. Thank you.